Hi, I'm Jose Mari Del Rosario, LSGA 75. People just call me Mari. I am the uh, president and CEO of uh, Finma Hospitality or fi and uh, Finma Microtel Hotels here in the Philippines. Hi, this is Albert of Animo Magazine. We're here to interview Mr. Jose Mari Del Rosario of uh, Trip Hotel, and we're here to find out how Trip has managed to survive during this pandemic. Hi, Mari. How are you? Nice to see you, uh, Albert. I can't shake your hands. The yeah, rule says yes. uh, we can only. Yeah, let's this. do that. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, there you go. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> Yeah. So how are you now? That's part of the new normal. They call everything new normal. Yes. <laughs> right. So it's quite scary. How did you react as uh, as head of uh, of this hotel, Trip Hotel, when the news of uh, COVID started? Well, as you know, Albert, uh, Trip is only part of the uh, chain of hotels that we have here in the Philippines. We have a total of uh, 15 uh, hotels under the Microtel name, Microtel brand name, and then the the this hotel trip is our, our latest addition. But aside from that, uh, we have also about uh, five managed hotels under the Paramount brands, and these are independent hotels that are under our management. So they're all over the country, from far north as Baguio, as far down as Jensen and Davao. Now, to answer your question, it was really, really a shock in the sense that, uh, <clears throat> well, we've, we were sort of used to uh, um, disasters in the sense of uh, the Philippines being a disaster-prone country in terms of uh, volcano eruption, earthquake, typhoon. So we're, we're used to uh, disruptions. We just didn't anticipate and nobody anticipated that it could last this long. So it's been devastating for us. So how did I react? It was complete, really shock in terms of what do we do now? Before, we say, oh, three months lang yan. Uh, you know, people will forget, people will travel again. But this one is just really totally encompassing the whole economy of not only the Philippines, but the whole world. So it's been devastating. When did you feel that it's going to be a problem? Of course, on day one, you said, you know, it's gonna, you know, one week, two weeks, maybe, yeah. maybe a month. Right. But when did you feel that, hey, this is a serious problem? When they started imposing restrictions on travel, first it was a uh, restriction on travel from China. I said, okay, we don't have too much of a Chinese market. But when they started banning all foreigners coming into the Philippines, and then even domestic travel from among Filipinos, not only flying in, but completely shut down uh, the airports and uh, public transportation and even public transportation. So that is when it when really hit us. And then when it started spreading all, all over the world, uh, that's when really she said, you know, shit, what, what's it in for us? You know? Yeah. So what were, this, what, what were the things that you did as a strip or as microtel uh, to address the problem? Did you shut down? Did you reduce manpower? What was the uh, pivot? Because that's the term right now, eh? pivoting. Right. Yeah. So what was the pivot that FINMA did to ma in, in managing the hotels? First, we really gathered our thoughts and said, okay, who's our market? The market really for us, the microtel chain and then trip, was largely uh, business travelers, road warriors, and uh, uh, a big part of it is Filipinos. But even in the resort locations where we have the reverse, where we have foreign uh, visitors, 
that's what that was the first group of hotels that we thought this is gonna die so about here in Metro Manila uh, we didn't really know what was gonna happen so what did we do the first thing we really thought about was how would we take care of our employees when we started seeing that the occupancy was dwindling to single digit occupancy really single digits single digit wow even up to today our provincial hotels are sometimes three rooms suerte gana 10 rooms you know it's really single digit occupancy and um, but that's operating at a loss yes definitely and definitely. you still continue operations when we calculated it was more expensive to shut down than to than to operate on a skeletal level why when you shut down you have to pay separation then you have to uh, guard the facilities anyway with security guards otherwise yeah. it could be open to looting uh -huh. so just maintain very skeletal force and these are the people who have invested so much in the business as employment and so they will take care of your property and so if there's one two seven rooms occupied out of the inventory you know they'll, they'll serve them well but immediately what we had to do was convey confidence to our guests that we are here to take care of themselves to, to that we are a safe environment so we i'm part of the philippine hotel owners association and we started comparing notes and now here you see when you uh, come into the hotel there are hand washing stations yeah. you have to um, wash your hands and put uh, uh, masks all of these were in innovations even as they were just inventing the, the protocols we we had to do this right off the bat and then uh, when uh, businesses were uh, shutting down our restaurants we had to innovate very fast because it was closed but since the bpos were allowed to open then we started looking at them can we service their meal requirements this and that so things like those but uh, unfortunately we did had to we did have to scale down our uh, employee count and it's hurt, it hurts i'm sure it hurts you personally yes as an employer and as, as their uh, definitely friends right yeah. we've had to uh, uh you know each of the hotels are operating uh financially independent of each other they don't we don't mix uh the revenues of each other so each one is a standalone and in some cases we had to renegotiate re our financing we had, had to go to the bank and say you know uh look uh, how how can we work and uh banks have been very understanding about the situation not only because of the government laws uh, the bayanihan one and two but because they know they wouldn't know what to do with the foreclosed asset correct they don't know what to, to how to run a hotel anyway mm. or to run a uh, whatever uh, uh, even a car what will they do with it it's so much uh, depreciated value if you foreclose on a, on an owner of a car so they've been uh, quite cooperative we're very happy about that that's nice to hear but none of your microtel branches have totally closed we did for a while for months um like let's say the one in uh, in Jero santos when they locked down the whole, whole city in davao even in baguio um yes yes we did um, the only ones that didn't shut down completely were the ones here in Metro Manila. We have four here in Metro Manila uh, and a fifth one, uh, an independent brand under uh, uh, Paramount. And uh, since day one, they have been having uh, BPO business. Uh, they had to run 24-7. Uh, so what they did was house all of their employees in the hotels and uh, also the other business was returning OFWs a lot of repatriates coming in and they had to be quarantined so that was the bulk of the business and up to today it's still that 
But in the provinces, uh, let's say from from Baguio, uh, then even uh, the resorts especially, they're, they're shut down. And uh, unfortunately, even if the government lift all of these barbecue, Q, 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 it doesn't work that way because the, the, the messaging of government levels is totally different. National says it's open, the local government says, no, you can't come in. Uh -huh. Classical example, they opened up Boracay for Western Visayas uh, uh, residents, but the spending power of Western Visayas people are also down. So nobody went to Boracay. Then they tried a next step, uh, open it up to, uh, but then they restricted it by so many regulations. The airlines weren't flying in. The Civil Aeronautics Board didn't open the airport. So you had to, the Boracay owners had to deal with three different levels of government, national, the LGU, and the Civil Aeronautics Board. And for the tourists, the local tourists, it costs a lot. It, it would cost a lot of money for me to, to go there because I have to get the clearances, the medical certificates, even some barangay clearances. Very, so it's not very, very true. It's not very convenient. Not now, at all, not at all. How about the hotel industry? I'm sure they're going through the same experience as you are. You have an idea on, on how the whole industry is, is moving forward? I don't have the exact numbers, but yeah. unemployment is really bad. Can you imagine, if you're running a five-star hotel, let's say, let's say uh, a Shangri-La or a Hyatt, you have big ballrooms, you have eight restaurants, for example. You have a Japanese restaurant, a Chinese restaurant, a, a French uh, fine dining. All of those are shut down. Not to mention the ballrooms. You have uh, a ballroom with a capacity of 1,000 people, 1,500, or let's say even 300. It's shut down. It's not making money at all. It's and these zero. are the high ticket items. They're, these are the yes, high ticket yes. uh, venues. Right. They, yeah. got, they make a lot of money on the food, right, on the rental. Right. You know, like, for example, the, the Marriott near the airport. They just expanded for to be the biggest ballroom uh, in the country. And so, and it's, it's happening in Cebu, in Iloilo, you know, it, it's the same thing. All of these ballrooms is not only now having problems, but the new normal when, you know, when they open up, it's going to be really a, a pandemic financially, really very disastrous. What are you going to do with all of those ballrooms? Exactly. For trip moving forward, first, personally, when do you think this COVID will end? They say it's going to be in April 2021. I've seen some studies and I think, well, the biggest factor would probably be the vaccine. But even at that, even if you get it today, it would take a long time before people will start traveling again. People are scared to travel in a in a in a metal tube with 300 people traveling from all over the US back to here or from Japan or from Hong Kong uh, it's a it's a worrying prospect even if you know that the, the uh, industry is doing everything they can to to convey a message of uh, health measures however um, to answer your question, I think really it will take all of 2021 to even start recovering. I can agree with uh, the numbers of Philippine Airlines when they said that uh, 2019 level of passengers will only return at the earliest, the last quarter of 2022. Uh, we have about one or uh, two years of really just having to survive. It's a, it's a very scary prospect. And you think the hotel industry will, will survive that long? A lot, of, a lot of the owners, a lot of the hotels, will, some will really have to shut down permanently. Uh, that, that is the truth. 
some will have to go into real financial trouble and have to be uh, uh, foreclosed by the banks. Uh, but the single sad thing is the unemployment that has uh, been caused. It is really going to be bad. Uh, you know, we've, we've come this far. Maybe it's going to, you know, like since, since last night, they, they allowed uh, Filipinos to travel outbound. Okay, uh, or staycations to happen since since last week. I mean, really, who's going to stay? Uh, you, you're already here in NCR. Are you going to stay in a hotel here in NCR as well? So that's going to be a very difficult prospect. I'm usually a very op uh, optimistic person, but, <laughs> you know. I, I saw a, uh, a fellow, a fellow Lasallian who owns a hotel. Mm -hmm. I saw his uh, business model okay. wherein he was selling the hotel room. So whoever occupies that, they get, they get a share of the revenue of the hotel room. That's, that's you know, I've seen that before mm -hmm. in some hotels. I think Astoria did that already. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it will work. Because if you have a lot of money now, what do you do with that? Uh, it's... Again, uh, a, an investor, uh, if he puts in money to buy a, a 30 square meter hotel room as an investment, you would be looking at past performance. Mm -hmm. But you will have to be very sharp to see what, what is the performance going to be moving forward. Uh, and it, it's just common sense that, uh, you know, for the developer side, he, he gets a little bit of his money back. But how about for that investor? It's just like getting a, an owner to, to buy a Toyota Vios on, on financing, on installment, and putting it in Grab. Mm -hmm. Will you have the returns like you had before or not? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, so, if you are going to borrow money at this point to get into a, any business, it's going to be very risky. Unless you get something like, uh, you know, e-commerce, I hear, is doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, agricultural products are probably doing very well. I hear that uh, you can't even buy pets. People like to have pets now. Uh, apparently, that's a very strong demand for pets uh, in the house because people are staying home. Same thing with plants. <laughs> yeah, so, mga plantitos and yeah, plantitas. Right, right. So, uh, <laughs> apparently, there are some pockets of opportunities that are happening that are... Uh, uh, congratulations to people who can really pivot and uh, think out of the box and uh, have something to do on the onset. Otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult prospect. I hate to sound like this, but I'm, I'm just talking, I'm being very honest, Albert. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, in summary, we're looking at the hotel industry, entry hotel and micro hotel, to wait until things evolve, things happen, as far as getting the vaccine, as far as the confidence of travelers, moving around local and international travelers moving around from your end are you just going to wait or are there things that you got you're you are going to do to get people to come here as an industry and um, fortunately the department of tourism um, is listening and and they move when when we ask for for something as much as possible they try to support and uh Yes, we have to we have to move on our own. We have to initiate things. The marketing message that we have to con to convey is it's safe to stay with us. It's safe to stay with hotels because we are doing all of these health protocols. It's okay to have your conference. It's okay to have your your meetings here in the hotels. The messaging has to be all one together with uh, with government. To be able to sell a product, the Philippines, as a safe destination, and to sell it to 
whether it's the Balikbayan market or the Koreans or the Chinese or the Japanese. 